I wanted to do physics, and when I first went to Bell Laboratories, I did some physics for about nine months, and then the war was coming along. And they said, oh, we've got to work on the war, and everybody's got to work on it. You must uh, do engineering and do radar. Oh, dear, I didn't want to do engineering. I wanted to do physics, but I had to do it. So I started working on radar, and I learned a great deal from that. That was very important to me. After the war, I was allowed to get back to physics in Bell Labs, and I studied water vapor spectrum and other spectra of molecules. That was the beginning of a big career in molecular atomic spectroscopy. And we were using um, electronic oscillators as a source of the radiation to shine on the molecules to get absorbed. And electronic oscillators wouldn't work shorter than maybe uh, half a centimeter. And I wanted to get shorter and shorter waves, and I kept thinking about how to do it. I worked on this. I tried various things in the laboratory. They didn't work. Then I was, uh, everybody knew I was very interested in this, and I was appointed chairman of a national committee to try to study how to get to shorter waves, how to get oscillators at shorter wavelengths. And nobody had any ideas. So we had our last meeting in Washington. I decided, well, we'll just write a report saying that, no, we, we can't find any ways of doing it. And uh, I woke up early in the morning worrying about it, the day of our last meeting. And uh, breakfast wasn't ready yet. It was bright and sunny. I went out and sat on the park bench in Franklin Park, a nice park bench. So I said, now, why hadn't I been able to come up with an idea of how to produce short waves? Electronic devices just couldn't produce short waves. They couldn't react fast enough to oscillate fast enough. And I uh, said, well, of course, molecules and atoms produce short waves, uh, but thermodynamics says you can't get more than a certain amount of power from them, and that power isn't very much. Einstein pointed that out. Einstein didn't foresee amplification, but he understood the mechanisms, the quantum mechanical mechanisms. And now Tolman, back in the early 1920s, he wrote a long paper about, about the quantum mechanical effects and so on, he said, well, of course, if there are more atoms up here than down there, then in principle they would amplify, but he says the amplification would probably be very small, and, and that was it. He had about one sentence on it, and that was all. <laughs> but he did recognize that it could amplify in principle, but nobody paid any attention to it. He didn't either. Law of thermodynamics is, uh, it says that the amount of power you can get depends on how hot you can make it, and uh, that's the power per unit frequency. I said, hey, wait a minute. Atoms and molecules don't have to obey thermodynamics. See, atoms and molecules, they can be in two states. There's an excited state and a lower state. And if a light wave comes along, it, the lower state absorbs it, so it knocks the atom up here. Uh, light waves can come along and stimulate this one up, this, this level, and make it drop down and give up a light wave. But there are always more down here than up there. Thermodynamics says there's more down here than up there, so there's always a net absorption. I said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can get atoms in states where they're more up here than down here. I pulled out an, uh, an envelope from my pocket and wrote down the equation. Uh, it looks like it really would probably work. Oh, wow. But now I went back to the meeting then. We had our last meeting, and I felt, well, this is a kind of a funny idea, and I think I won't try to explain it and bring it up now. We'll just go ahead and write our report that we can't find any way. So we did. I went home and I worked it out some more and wrote it down in a notebook just how to do it. I knew, hey, wait a minute, that, that looks uh, very important. And I fixed it up so I could get a patent on it and so on. <clears throat> now, I wanted to get, to get the short waves down to the infrared, shorter than a millimeter, let's say. But I had some microwave equipment then, and I knew it would be easier to do it in the microwave region first, try it out there. And so that's why I did it in the microwave region first, and that was the Mesa. Actually, when I was building the Mesa, I, it worked on it for about three years before we made it work. And a lot of people came along and said, oh, well, yeah, that's an interesting idea. But nobody competed with us. Everybody saw it, and oh, well, okay. Nobody competed with us at all. So we built it, and then it became exciting, and then a lot of people went into the field. My Mesa patent patented uh, the whole field of Mesas and lasers. The laser patent was a, uh, let's say, a refinement patent of the Mesa patent. 
Maser means microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. You stimulate the molecules to give the radiation. Laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. I sometimes say, well, maybe we ought to have erasers for infrared amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. <laughs> of course, lasers now cover infrared and optical and ultraviolet and so on. Science is fun. Finding new things is fun. Uh, I've just had a good time all my life, and I, I encourage you to think about things, explore things, and find new things. <laughs> it's great fun, and it's very important for humans. Music